I, I, I mean, I, I help a lot of young brands and large brands also to create engaging strategies to be able to connect with their markets, to be able to build brands and get ready for the global, the, the, globe, the world at large. Um, I also do some consulting. And so I help businesses and entrepreneurs gain clarity and growth um, because it, 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 it's, it's a pretty difficult world now. And a lot of people are doing things, even though they may be making money, they may not necessarily know exactly what their value to the world is and how to gain that clarity. So I help people do that through um, coaching sessions. And I'm also a speaker on um, entrepreneurship generally in Africa. Um, there's three main businesses that have made me who I am today. Um, Workspace Global, that is the branding agency. That's my biggest business. Um, Open Space Global is a community similar to yours um, of entrepreneurs, creatives, and um, business professionals, um, Afri pro-African um, around the world who also come together for the betterment of them, themselves and then society at large. And then Zoom Team is a content creation company for businesses. So photo, video, 3D illustrations, AI, things like that. So that's just generally me, Sydney Sam in a, in a nutshell, okay? So let's just go straight into today's conversation. Career, it's, it's a very heavy, very fancy, very, um, uh, it, it, it's a deep word because it defines how a lot of us achieve our purposes on earth. Most of us, I mean, uh, and for those who are religious, um, your career will be a summation of a lot of things that you do in your life. So it's hard to have a career if you just started, but you need to have been in it for some time. But in my perspective, I just wanted to help with a little bit with um, the mindsets that we have. A career is a path, okay, or a journey for which you create value for others, whether it's a business, whether it is um, an, a large organization, whether it's for an employer, in which you create value for others, right? Hopefully, through your passion, hopefully, because not many people are able to create value and still feed their passion. It's not, it's not a very common thing, especially in our parts of the world, but thankfully, things are changing. So you are able to create value for people um, or businesses or employers, right? Hopefully through your passion whilst getting paid for it. So that is my perspective of what a career is. Now, there's a very interesting word that is there at the, at the last bit, which is called Ikigai. It's something that I'll encourage everybody, every one of you to Google. Um, it's, I've had a series of conversations around the world concerning this for the last three months. And Ikigai is basically a concept Right? It's, a, it's a Japanese concept that it is possible for you to find the perfect place where you are giving value to people, you are pursuing your passion, you are getting paid for it. It's that perfect place. You know, it's a, usually some people can have a passionate project, but they're not making money. Some people are making money, but they're not passionate about it. You know, some people, the world doesn't find value anymore for the things that they do, you understand? So Ikigai is that perfect place within your career or within, uh, I mean, your business lifetime where you are able to find the perfect intersection between value, passion, and getting paid, okay? Now, the fourth part of Ikigai, which I haven't even mentioned, is for you to also be able to create impact in the world. So creating impact is also another thing where you notice that there's a lot of things that people do just to be able to give back or better, better people. But it's not always the case that you are able to create impact and get paid at the same time. But I will not go into that end. So that's generally my perspective of career and my recommendation as to what everybody should pursue with their careers. I want everybody here to achieve Ikigai at some point in their lives because we, everything that we do is for purpose and everything that we do is for fulfillment. And if you don't have those, it can be very difficult to navigate. You can work for 10 years, 20 years, and still feel like I haven't really done much in my life because you never found your Ikigai, okay? I'm gonna move on to the next slide. So let's talk a little bit about career growth, okay? Um, it, it, it happens in so many different dimensions. And, and don't think that it's only time that, that, that um, quantifies or substantiates um, 
career growth. Career growth can happen in so many ways and so many dimensions. It's possible that somebody can have career growth in two years. It's possible that someone can have career growth in 10 years. So don't only use time as the biggest factor. Now, my perspective of career growth, which I want to share with everyone, is the first dimension is learning, okay? Now, learning, we all know what learning, it's a word that we throw around all the time. Oh, I'm going to study in school. I'm learning new things. I'm an avid learner. A lot of people say those things, okay? But the active acquisition of knowledge consistently towards the purpose for which you are doing things is what I define as learning, okay? Now, we've all seen in our adult lives that learning does not stop when you finish university okay or i mean for those who didn't finish university when you finish high school learning does not stop it actually even gets um, it's it's even more complicated because you are working and you're supposed to be making money and creating value but still learning at the same time so you can achieve career growth in terms of your active learning gaining new knowledge gaining new skills over time okay now the second bit of career growth comes from experience so experience i believe is the refinement the access to more information that allows you to be a better expert in any specific field okay so it's possible for you to do the exact same thing for example you're a baker or you're a barber you will definitely become a better barber if you've been do, been barbering for 15 years you understand or a better baker by experiencing the different types you know how to bake during light off how to do this, how to do that, the different kinds of clientele, the different kind of um, environments that you, you usually face, you know, um, and, and that's what builds your experience. So the first way to grow your career is through learning. The second way to grow your career is through experience, okay? The third way is not a very traditional way, which is innovation. And I know the word innovation is thrown around so often, so many times in, in most of these um, conversations, but in my perspective, innovation is literally just the application of new knowledge to a specific situation or the apl application of current knowledge in a new situation, okay? So it is possible that you can be a customer service uh, um, representative in a bank, right, and be doing that for a long time. But then to innovate in your career is to take the skills that you have in the banking sector, for example, and move into another sector. That's one. Number two, you could also apply new skills and new knowledge to what you're already doing. So for example, if you are a teller in a bank, if you start to add some kind of a digital um, angle to the work that you are doing, that is some innovation in your career. And that is what will take you to the next level. So for example, you'll notice that some people um, develop a niche, okay? Somebody is very good at um, sketching, okay? But then they, they start to learn how to sketch maybe very specific things, um, buildings or, uh, or rooms, and then therefore they become an architect. They start to sketch a lot of things in terms of landscapes and other things, and therefore they become a painter. This is how innovation works. So you can have a specific skill or a specific career, or a specific role, but when you apply new knowledge or put your current skills in a different environment, you're applying innovation, and that's where career growth comes from. The next and last thing that I want to share with you concerning career growth is adaptation, okay? So this is not a very common word, I mean, in terms of when, when people talk about career growth, it's like, oh, why am I adapting when, you know, I'm not the one who owns the business, when I'm not the one who determines what my job description is, when I'm not the one who has the leadership position, when, you know, a lot of our perspectives, especially in this part of the world, have to do with accepting the current status of whatever is handed to us, okay? So you can recognize in, in, in certain environments that if you stay in a specific career path for too long, you will start to become redundant. So I'll give you a very clear example. If you were somebody who used to use a typewriter back in the 90s, okay, you could have gained experience in using a typewriter. You could have learned, I mean, to be faster, et cetera, et cetera. However, you would have become very redundant very quickly because the world has moved away from using typewriters. So with those same skills, you can grow your career by adapting to new technology, okay? Or applying those skills in just a slightly different way so that it's still relevant. I hope that makes sense. 
So this is how sometimes career growth can take place, um, you know, through learning, through experience, through innovation and through adaptation. And I want to challenge every single one of you to look critically at yourself right now. Look at the career that you've been pursuing over the last year or last two years or the career ahead of you and ask yourself, how exactly can I grow my career through any one of these or through all of these? I'll be very excited to hear what you guys have to say about this. Okay, so let's move on to the next section. Now, Accra is hard, Ghana is hard, Africa can be hard, the world is hard. Finding opportunity is not very easy. Now, we also don't come from, uh, like, or some people don't come from an upbringing where when an opportunity is not presented, you go out and find it. A lot of times we've been trained to pray for opportunity or pray that favor finds you. I mean, I, I, I'm very religious and I believe in that, but it's also necessary to, to be able to have the eye to see opportunity, to seek out opportunity and to ready yourself so that when opportunity finds you, you can grab it. Because it's possible that an opportunity that's for you can find you, but you, do, you are not ready or at the place in your career where you'll be able to grab and, and, and maximize that opportunity. Okay, so the first thing that I want to discuss in terms of finding opportunity is one, find new problems, okay? It's very easy to see every single company in this world no matter how big they are, have problems, have new problems all the time. So a good example would be a, uh, if it was a school, okay, you recognize that database management has become a very important thing nowadays. And schools want to know who their students are, how their information is kept, where they're located, things like that, okay? Now you realize maybe every student's name is kept in a register you know, which is a book, an actual, um, you know, the full scap notebook, right? And sometimes these books will get wet during the rain. Sometimes certain names are not, be able to be, are not able to be found because, um, you know, it's not done in alphabetical order, et cetera, et cetera. So you as somebody who's working in a school can pursue the problem and go like, listen, it's going to get to a point where our students are going to be more than a thousand. And using full scap notebook to record all their information is not going to be good. I foresee this problem. I'm going to train myself and then be able to solve this problem within my organization. Okay, so that's a very good way to find opportunities. Look for new problems. Okay, number two, see old problems and find better ways to solve them. Okay, so I'll give a very good example is um, if for example, in agriculture, we've always used cutlasses and hoes for many years, okay? It's um, being able to employ or going to find something like a lawnmower to be able to ease and increase the speed of having to weed something all the time is a better way to solve an old problem, you understand? So in a career perspective, you need to see certain things. There are certain things that you probably have been doing for so many years, every day that you come in, um, you need to go around and deliver letters to every uh, management staff or, you know, but you realize that, okay, if we have um, an email system or if we have a communication management system and I can learn how to do those things so that I can solve all problems with a better way for my company. Okay. Now, another thing that another way to find opportunity is also to look for the same problems that you probably have built a career in, but in new environments. Okay. I'll give you a very good example, okay? Now, there's something called uh, a linguist uh, um, in other, uh, for other places, it's called a translator, okay? Now, a translator, somebody who can speak maybe both English and French, um, can be a, a, a teacher, a French teacher in a school, okay? Right, because the, the problem that exists is that students need to learn how to, um, English students need to learn how to speak French. Now that same person can take their ability to speak both English and French to a bank and, and, and the bank, they would help the bank interact with its francophone customers and be paid more money. You understand? That same person in a bank could take their, their, their skills into an international NGO organization to help a French organization coming into Ghana interact with the local people. 
You understand? So you see that it's the same problem where we need to be able to translate a language between English to French and French to English. But in new environment, there exist new opportunities. You understand? So that is something that I would like everybody to take very critical notice of, that there's, there's definitely something that you are doing, that if you are applying in a different way within your company, within a new company, to start a business, the same problem applied to new environments can create new opportunities for you. Now, the last bit of what I want to indicate is you need to increase your ability to think. That is a very good way to find new opportunities. Now, this sounds like a very vague statement. So let me, let, me, let me just explain it to most people, okay? In every organization, there's a lot of different levels, okay? There's the executive level, there is the uh, management level, there's the supervisory level, and then there's the technical level. A lot of us enter our careers at the technical level, okay? I know how to write. I know how to, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I know how to file certain documents. I know how to, you know, those are all technical skills that we learn, okay? Now, your ability to be, to be able to move those technical skills into a strategic space, okay? Where you're going to go like, okay, even though I'm a writer, how can my writing influence, let's say, the, the general direction of the company, okay? How can my writing influence a brand? How can my writing, you get it? Finding a way by which, for, so for most people, they're just yes, yes people. Okay, write this document and then I write it. And do this uh, um, task, then you just do it, okay? But your ability to think on the level to uh, determine the future purpose of the skill that you have and apply it to a future problem to be able to, let's say, you know, uh, um, move a, a bit from the technical to a slightly more management or strategic angle creates more opportunities for you. So you realize that most of the people who are promoted in a business have their, they've moved from a technical level to a thinking level, a strategic level, where they can have conversations on a certain level that will go like, okay, three, three months down the line, we want to be able to anticipate X or Y, and therefore I'm going to use my skills for that. That is creating opportunity based on your ability to think. Now, if thinking is not your thing and you are able to lead people, that is another opportunity for you. And you need to recognize that leadership on its own is a full on uh, um, um, skill that you have to learn. You cannot, you cannot um, just get up and be a leader. There's a lot of things that you have to um, 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 practice. There's a lot, you have to learn communication. You have to learn how to inspire people, how to motivate people, things like that. Now, if that comes to you naturally, apply yourself and learn to be a better leader. So you realize that in a bank where there are 10 tellers, right, your ability to lead the other nine tellers to, to get something done is what will make you head of customer service. You understand? But you're not thinking about it that way because I'm just going to do my job. I'm just going to do my job every day. But you exhibit leadership, taking initiative, gathering people and, and influencing people. And you realize that even in the same thing that you've been doing over years, you create new opportunities for yourself because businesses and organizations and even your own private thing, you're looking for the ability to lead people, and which, which is very useful no matter the technical skill that you have. So this is a very good way to find opportunity in terms of your career and in your career growth. Now, let's come to the big topic for today, COVID-19. COVID-19 for me has been both a blessing and a curse because it has exposed all the things that we haven't been missing for so many years. Even though it has also destroyed a lot of things, I've come to realize that it is only through struggle or only through, let's say, adversity that civilizations innovate, that people think about ways to do better. So for, I mean, there's a lot of things that have happened in this case where the invention of light, the invention of, you know, so many great things always came from adversity. You get it? So COVID-19, even though it has been so devastating and I know what it has done for my business and so many others, I realized that 
it presents the right opportunity for us to make the heavy shift in our careers, in our businesses, and in generally our lives to get ahead of future problems. You understand? So let's talk about how or what COVID-19 has to do with our careers. Now, you realize that in the beginning of our conversation, we spoke about being able to create value. If you are not creating value, it is very difficult for you to have a meaningful career because people only pay for value, okay? You go to a barber shop, you pay. If the barber isn't barbering your hair, you're not going to pay him. You understand? So you always need to understand that value is essential. You need to understand what value do you bring to the table, not just in your business, but in general, okay? So COVID has made value clearer than ever. There was something called presenteeism, where in most businesses, they would have 100 staff, okay? Because they were supposed to have maybe, they, they indicated they were supposed to have 10 secretaries, this number, this number, because of that. But after COVID, a lot of businesses have begun to realize that out of those 10 secretaries, only four of them are actually working. The other six were coming to work and were just, just by the fact that they came to work and turned on their computers and did a little typing, they were paid. You understand? So when businesses are laying off and, sit and, and things like that, it's because they have recognized that aside the fact that things are hard, value is only translated by actual work and actual delivery, not just showing up, not just existing, not by having a degree, not by you know, um, attending meetings, you understand? So that is really where a lot of us have to question ourselves that, am I creating value where I am? What value, even though I'm creating value, what value does my company or my business need? Is it clear? What do I need to do? Okay, so that is what COVID has put on us nowadays. Now, number two, companies are shifting and shedding what is not necessary, okay? So um, oh, I see a question um, or a comment, but let me just continue. I'll, I'll try to take the questions at the end. Companies are shifting and shedding what is not necessary. So I found a lot of companies who recognize that before, for example, um, I'll give you a clear example, the oil industry. Because people are not moving around and are not traveling, um, fuel, the prices of fuel have gone down. Um, you know, people are not buying fuel as much and things like that, okay? So the, the use for, for fuel attendance has also reduced. You get it? And because of that, companies are shedding a lot of fuel attendance. And looking into the future, you will realize that businesses are now more and more encouraged to be lean. Because now that people are working from home, People don't need lavish buildings. They don't need um, to buy each of their employees um, a car or, you know, a lot of things are going away. So that's something that we need to realize and, and shift and, and adjust ourselves in terms of what our careers are going to do. Because a certain skill that you have in a certain context may very easily be shared based on what your company or your business is doing. Number three, Identify the problems ahead of time. Anybody who had heard of COVID, because some people heard about COVID in January and adapted themselves to be able to prepare for the hit. You understand? So identify foreseeable problems, learn about it, okay? And try to offer value directly to that. I'm just going to check to see what the comments are. Just a second, sorry. Sincere apologies, everyone. All right, sorry, uh, so I can see there's some, um, there's some commentary going on, I apologize. Um, okay, so um, yes, so identify the problem ahead of time, learn about it. When we say learn about it, it's not just reading an article. The same way you went to school to become a doctor, to become a nurse, to become a lawyer, that is how you have to adapt and, and learn about problems that are coming ahead of time, okay? So you need to, you know, if you are in the banking sector, a lot of banks are going into e-banking. If you don't understand e-banking, start to learn about e-banking. There's a lot of free courses online. 
And some courses are actually paid, but they are quite affordable. I mean, I think about two to three dollars a month to be able to access some of these courses on things like Udemy, LinkedIn Learning, and Coursera. Okay, these are places by which you can take one hour a day to learn about these things. Then offer value directly. Guys, it's very important for you to communicate what you can do to whoever you're giving value for. Because until you tell somebody that, oh, even though I've been doing this for you, I can also do this, they will never know. And sometimes they wouldn't come to ask you. So if you see a problem, go straight to your superior, to your clients, to your supervisor, to your partners and go like, this is what I'm learning now. I'm learning about e-banking and therefore I would want to be in the e-banking unit in two months. I can see that this is something that the bank really needs to do. So here I am. This is how I'm going to be available. This is the intentionality that is needed for you to adapt and grow in your career. Okay. Number four, navigating remuneration. Now, this is what I'm going to tell everyone. Remuneration is directly tied to what you need to survive or thrive in your personal life. Okay. Now, if that amount is a thousand cities or 5,000 cities, okay, you cannot expect your employers to anticipate what is going on at home. Okay. And therefore pay you more based on that. So the only conversation you can have for remuneration is value. Okay. Businesses do not understand anything else. You cannot go and say, oh, my, my, my children need to go to school. So I beg you, can you increase my salary by 50%? It doesn't work that way. You understand? Businesses are also almost strict, uh, non-human entities sometimes. So good business decisions are always for the business. You understand? So when you are thinking about remuneration, you need to go deeper than just the fact that, oh, my job is paying me 1,000 CDs. I need 2,000 CDs, so I'm in a bad job. It's possible that the value that you're offering in the environment that you are can only pay you 1,000 CDs. You understand? So try not to set your expectations from that specific place too high because people are paying you based on value. I'm not saying all employers are always paying fairly, but just if your mindset about remuneration is that remuneration is based on value. If I can offer more value, I can get more money. So I'm going to offer more value. And you even need to recognize that offering more value, it may not be immediate because companies budget a year at a time, okay? Or six months at a time. So even if you have mastered e-banking e, e and the, the, the business is looking to um, start an e-banking unit in six months or one year, you have to apply that value and make yourself relevant enough that at the time when they are going to start putting money to it, you are there to be able to receive more remuneration. You understand? So don't, don't lie to yourselves or don't confuse yourselves about entitlement, saying that I, I've been working in this business for three years, I've been doing this, so I deserve this amount of money. It doesn't work that way. COVID-19 has made it very clear that businesses will only pay for what they can afford and what they hold as valuable. Now, what they hold as valuable is also not based on your personality, but it's based on what you can offer for the business. Okay. I'm just going to push very quickly into our last section and then I'll take some questions from you guys. Okay. So, evolving our careers after COVID 19. This is the big conversation for today. And um, we've, we've, we've had a deep dive into how we can change our mindsets, how the things that we can do to create opportunities for ourselves, how do, to identify problems and create value for those. Now, let's talk a little bit about the future, okay? Value has not changed. It is how you transfer value that has changed, okay? So previously, you needed to be in the office to be able to hold meetings, to do reports, to do X or Y. But now you have to do it through e-methods, e okay? Previously, marketing was done through billboards, radios, and TV. Now it is done by social media. It's just, a it's the same marketing. It's just the way it is transferred that has been, that is different. 
Some time ago, counseling was only done in person. Nowadays, counseling is being done over Zoom, over, you know, so the same people still need what they need, okay? But how it is transferred to them has changed. For example, Uber. Uber now does Uber Eats, where they are delivering food to people, okay? People still eat. Everybody still needs to eat food. But now the way food moves from the market to the home or from the restaurant to the home has changed, okay? The second thing is learn deeply about value transfer. It is not as simple to say, okay, um, now social media is the way everybody markets. So I'm going to post a few things and that's it. You have to really mind the same way you mind to get your psychology degree, to get your accounting degree. You have to mind about the new way of transferring value. Okay. Number three, we forget to think. A lot of people can be in a business for five, 10 years doing the exact same thing. And you'll be only paid marginally. And I'll give you a secret now. Usually when your salary is increased, you are on, it's usually increased based on inflation rates. So technically, you're not necessarily earning more money for doing the same thing. You are just, you've just been adjusted so that you can afford a life in the current time. In the current time. So please, move deeper into analysis. Move deeper into planning. Learn some of these things. Okay, you can be a security man, okay, but if you learn about how security works in Accra, you will know how to mobilize two or three boys to be able to set up a security team. From there, you can be able to set up a security company. You understand? You'll be able to understand how customers, like as, as the same thing as a security man, analyzing how customers uh, and the people that you're protecting work. Oh, in the morning, they want their compound to be cleaned. In the morning, they want their, their gates to be open. You know? So you start to analyze some of these things. You start to plan around some of these things and offer more value to these people. This is the one and true way you are going to succeed in the future. Move away just from technical skills and learn about analysis of that same skill in whatever field it is. It could be in baking, it could be in anything. Learn about planning and learn about the strategic aspect of that job, okay? Number four, Find ways to increase efficiency so that you can offer your value to more than one employer or buyer, okay? Because if you are earning 1,000 Ghana cities, okay, and you need 2,000 cities to survive, we've been brainwashed in a way where it's like you need to have a job eight to five and, and, and work five days a week, um, four weeks a month, before you know that you are working, okay? It is possible that if your job requires you to write 10 reports every week, that is what your job is. Your job is not to be around um, 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 eight to five every day. I, I mean, this is, this is um, um, in, in varying situations, okay? But when you figure out what that value is, 10 reports take me five days to do. If I can do 10 reports in three days, I can negotiate to have two days off so that I can write reports for other people and make up for that extra thousand cities. You understand? This is how to evolve your career. You don't have to serve one um, um, master all the time to be able to be successful. Okay? It's good to be able to do that. Sometimes, you know, you can even do it for multiple departments. So you can, you, you increase your efficiency as a secretary to the legal department, then you, you negotiate and say, listen, I can also be the secretary for the accounting department because I found a way to do my secretarial work much faster. So can you pay me a little bit more? What you would have paid to hire another secretary, pay me a bit more to be able to do that. These are some of the ways by which you can evolve your career. Then the last one is build a brand. I beg you, build a brand because Four years, five years down the line, you are the best person in your organization, but nobody knows. And therefore, when you move into another organization, you are now relying on references or on people's recommendations or certain things before you are given the credit and the credibility that you deserve. Do you understand? Building a brand, I mean, I'm open to speaking to anybody on this call at, um, at any point in time to give some take on how to build your brand, even as an employee. LinkedIn is a very good place. Just comment on certain things, you know, um, talk about the things that you care about, okay? And do it little by little and consistently. It doesn't have to be perfect, 
But as long as people are getting to know and trust you for what you say and what you do, you'd be surprised at the opportunities it will unlock for you later on in your career. So guys, thank you so much for today. I just want to open the floor to questions, um, but this is my delivery on how to evolve your career after COVID. Um, I'd I would open the floor for um, Ignatius to also take, back, um, take, take the floor to invite the questions and then I'll respond to those. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hello, Ignatius. I'm sorry, I'm on mute anyway. Okay, that's fine. Or oh, Rachel, I mean, if you have any, if you have any questions, if you have any, um, let's kind of share. Yeah, Sydney, thank you so much for today. This was a good one. So I'll just invite um, Ignatius to take over from there. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sydney. That was very insightful. I've learned a lot personally as you were speaking. I had I have my notes here. Mm -hmm. I've taken I've I've taken down some notes already. Mm -hmm. Um some people have some questions for you. Okay. But some have sent them to me. I'll I'll start so with the first hard. question. Yes. yes, I'll just read it out. Someone is saying that. As a business person or as an owner of a business, yes. in, in COVID-19, now that COVID-19 seems not to be ending anytime soon, how yes. do you expand your value-based proposition to position yourself for more clients? He's asking if you should stick to always using social media or explore other avenues to expand your value and transfer that value to your clients all right so what i will say is that the, the the question in itself is is broken into two folds okay um i initially i hear I, I hear value and then the next thing i hear is about marketing or the transfer i mean uh, that that's what I'm, I'm hearing so i'll take the first one it is important for you to understand the value but the question I have for, for the person who's asking this question is, have you articulated your value? Okay. So for example, I do branding. Okay. I, I personally, I can do graphic design personally as a, as a, as a, as a, a human being, I can do graphic design, web design, um, photography, video, um, writing. I can do all these skills. Okay. But I don't do any of them because all I needed was the knowledge. Because I realized that the value that I give to people is clarity in their business and helping them with their brand strategy. So what I realized is that that value is usually translated by talking to them. You understand? So if you, you are, I, I've been able to identify that I help people with clarity and, and, and through, and through str and strategy, expanding on that value is not necessarily marketing blindly, okay? It is basically finding more people, okay, direct, and you'd be surprised. You may not even need social media. What I like to do is that I like to go to communities that have um, um, the, my most ideal clients, which is entrepreneurs. So I partner with organizations such as yours, I partner with, you know, things like GIPC and things like that, who give me access to a concentrated group of my potential customers. And then I will showcase my value through a presentation and then they come to me, you understand? So these are just some of the ways by which you can, you, I mean, so it's not just social media. Social media is one tool to market, but social media is only, social media is not the road, you understand? Social media in itself won't get you the business, but understanding the value and a pool, finding a pool of where to find these people. It could be a church, it could be a school, it could be a Facebook group, it could be your alumni group, you know, whatever it is. And, and, the, and that's where you keep communicating and extending the opportunity for people to gain from your value. And I believe you'll be able to expand from there. I hope, I hope that answers the question a little bit, Ignatius. Exactly, it, it does, it does. Thank you so much. And there is another question here. 
saying that as an employee, this person is an employee and has a business on the, on the side. Hello, Ignatius, your, your network is a bit bad. How does he position his brand mm -hmm. in a way that there's no conflict? Hello? Can you hear me, brand? While wow. he's also putting us on it. So how does he portray the right, the right brand to the market? Mm -hmm. Hello, Hello yeah. Sydney. Did you get a question? Did you get a yes, question? I did. Yes, I okay. Did. All right. So what I'm going to say is that um you are an employee, okay? You are also a person. So you are a professional and you need to you need to understand that as much as you work for a company company needs you okay so if you are able to communicate your personal thoughts on a matter or your expertise without disclosing any company secrets during your brand building process you are fine you understand the fact that i'm a teller at a bank doesn't mean i can't talk about how to be a good teller on linkedin nobody is going to come to me for it but if i start saying that okay and what is necessary um, to become a good teller because in my bank, this is how it's done, blah, blah, blah. That is when you are, you are spilling company secrets. You understand? So you need to just focus on, on what is safe, what is your personal expertise, your personal opinion, and some of the experiences that would help other tellers out there without incriminating yourself. So that's, that's just the, the, the general perspective that I have on people who are um, employees and having side business. It's not the, I encourage people to have side businesses. I have about 21 full-time staff, and I, am the, I actually give some of them seed money to, to launch their businesses because that way they're expressing themselves in, um, in, 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 in an entrepreneurial way, right? And it makes them even more comfortable because they are making more money, which eases the pressure on me. So I also give them flexibility, and then in return, I am able to buy their loyalty and just have them, you know, so it's not a competition. You get it because you're a professional. Everybody's an individual. I, 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 hope, I hope that 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 makes sense. So that's just my, my perspective. As long as you don't share any incriminating information about your organization, you have the full right to share your expertise and your opinions on social media to build your brand. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. All right, Rick. Ignatius. Yes, uh, I think he's, he's, he's off, but then that's fine. I mean, I've really enjoyed today's session. I'm really, really, really mm -hmm. grateful for everyone's time. Um, oh, someone just sent a, um, a question about if everybody is supposed to be an entrepreneur. And I mean, I think the answer is in the question that it's not just us, everybody, I mean, people, not everybody can be a doctor or not everybody can be a teacher. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur. It has become cool to be an entrepreneur nowadays. So a lot of people are jumping into creating hustles um, that are making them money, but it does not necessarily mean, um, it does not necessarily mean they are entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs, it's like a doctor. You can, there are certain times that you have patients, there are other times you don't have patients. There are certain times that your patient is bleeding profusely so if it is not, you are, you are doing, you're being a doctor just for the money and you are presented with certain challenges, you don't have the skills to deal with those challenges because innately you are not a doctor. You get it? It is possible that maybe you are a pharmacist. I, I hope that makes sense. So it's the same thing with entrepreneurship. People jump into entrepreneurship too quickly thinking that, oh, it's the way out. Everybody is doing it now. It's a very, very, very difficult space. If it's for you, fine. You understand? But I even encourage that some people work, work for some time and see if you, you can try something on the side, which gives you the luxury of learning about entrepreneurship with some kind of financial backing so that you don't go through the force. 
that's just my perspective on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, Ignatius, any more Thank questions? Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much for your answers. I think I think that's all for now. Yes, um, if anyone has any question, you can drop them. If not, then we wrap up. But it's been very what you shared, even with the answers you shared, and how you spoke about communicating your brand and what your brand brings to the table as an employee and even as a business owner. And it's been a great time. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any further questions, you can drop them here. Yes, in the chat session, just drop your questions. Okay, so I think this is the final question. Hello, Sydney. Yes, I'm here. Hello, Sydney. Yes, I'm here. I'm here yes. So this, someone says, what do you do if after identifying an opportunity, things didn't work out for you? How do mm -hmm. you help yourself moving forward? Okay. So um, this is something that uh, a lot of people don't know. But, um, it is important for you to try out a few different things to ensure that you, have, you don't so put all your eggs in one basket. Okay. Usually what you recognize is that even with the most successful entrepreneurs, they have two, three, four businesses. Okay. Some people in certain or they always wanted to be uh, a baker or something and they wanted to work with a certain person and it didn't work out. What you have to do is at least nurture or gather multiple opportunities at the same time that you can realistically pursue. The one that gives you more security and more, you know, is what you do. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. That's what life is generally. That like, you know, things work out sometimes and things don't. And therefore you have to move on to find some more opportunities, just as I listed in this presentation today. So it's okay if like, you know, not, not everything is going to work out. My first business uh, many years ago failed. You get it? Because I was pursuing an opportunity and I didn't have the right knowledge, you know, so... It's perfectly okay. Just try to pursue multiple things at the same time. And as it gets better for one of them, then you focus. That's always a better way to go about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think there was one more question about rebranding yourself. Um, how do you rebrand yourself when you have been working in the company from here and people already have formed perceptions about you? Well, like with many things, reforming perceptions take time. Um, you know, it takes a lot of intentionality. It takes a lot of um, getting rid of the old things because people have a perception of you based on what you do and uh, what you say. So if you consistently, like... All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jimmy. It was a privilege having you. Hey, Ignatius, um, today they your network. Now... <laughs> oh, Rachel, that's fine. I mean, I, I have to step off really quickly. So I just want to just humbly okay. sign up. And uh, I re it's really okay. been a pleasure being with you guys today. Um, I really hope like this has been helpful to many of you on the on the call. And um, okay. my, my details are here, so please, anyone should reach out to me at any point in time, and I'll be happy to help. Okay, okay. thank you so much, Sydney. Thank you so much. This was a good one. I personally learned a lot as well, and, and I believe everyone has learned a lot as well. So I've shared Sydney's um, social media handles and email where you can reach out to him. So okay. if you want to connect with him, you can find the links in the chat section and if you want to reach out to the organization or myself or ignatius i'm going to post that I've, I've shared my number i'm going to share ignatius's number so that you get in touch with us all right then. all right all right guys thanks so much i'm signing thank out. you so much sydney bye bye yeah and thanks to thank you so much to, yeah sydney so you can drop your impression how you enjoyed the session just drop it in the chat session so what you learned and 
I hope you are going to apply what you've learned from our speaker. You should, you should know that value has not changed. You should learn deeply about value transfer, learn more about analysis, planning, and developing strategies, find ways to increase efficiency in order to offer value to multiple employers or buyers. And then you need to build a brand. So you can share your impression, what you learned from our speaker. Just share it in the chat session before we sign out. And I'd like to inform everyone that our next session will be same time next week. Same time next week. So next week, Sunday, we have another session. So just stay tuned. We'll keep you updated in the WhatsApp platform. And then once we update you, just make sure you join early so that we do things in, a, in an efficient manner to use time judiciously. So let me know your impressions. Great. Let me know your impressions. And I believe that whatever the speaker has shared is to help us as entrepreneurs, as business owners, and even as employees, wherever you find yourself. So kindly be a doer of the great insight you've lent. And I'll remind everyone of our quote of the day. I gave a quote of the day when I started. And I'll remind us all from Vince Lombardi. And it says, individual commitment to a group effort. That is what makes a team work, a company work, a society work and the civilization work. So wherever you find yourself, make sure that you put in that commitment as an individual to ensure that that group or that team reaches its goal. Maybe you're in your country when, as a citizen, you need to put in certain efforts to make your country better. So every little effort you put into a team or a Society, even maybe you are working for it, helps that the company reach its goals. So you should make it a point to be committed as an individual, and in that you transfer value. So if you want to join GYLCD, Rachel has already shared the contacts for you to join our organization. We are poised to equip individuals to build their skills to cause change in their communities. So you can join us and kindly take note that we have another session next week, same time, 4 p.m. GMT. So we will sign out shortly. Next week, kindly tell a friend to tell another friend to join. So tell a friend to tell another friend that we are in the business of equipping individuals to become better people. So don't forget to invite someone next week. I see you, Alexander Dorcas, Ifia, Emmanuel, Emmanuel again, Jocelyn, Justice, Leo, Lord, Nana Samuan, Nanayao, Philip, Raymond, Shadrach, Stephen, Patricia. Thank you all for coming, and it was great having you. We hope to see you same time next week. For Without any further submission, we sign out now. Take care of yourself, and have a great and productive week. Thank you all. All right, so you can sign out now. Thank you. So um, I'll end it soon. Thank you, everyone. So bye and see you same time next week on Sunday. Ignatius, thank you as well. I see you all. My friends who joined, thank you all so much. Those who are late, don't worry. We'll have the, the recording on YouTube so you can watch it from there. Thank you. Bye, everyone.